Okay, good morning. Hey, everybody. Uh, we're going to begin our day talking about client care plans a little bit and how to actually utilize Courtney Sykes Clinical Molecular Anti-Aging to really dive in with those pro-chemical peels. We're going to talk about that and how to incorporate it into laser treatments. I'm going to pull up a couple of things that I've got here for you. Uh, number one, when we are training aesthetics practitioners here at my institute, Southeastern Aesthetics Institute in Columbia, South Carolina, we focus a ton on client care plans. And I think that for many estheticians, you kind of have to take what you have learned from different uh, vendors and different relationships with chemical peel companies or laser companies or microdermabrasion machines or LED light therapy or whatever you like to use in your treatment room and figure out how that kind of cohesively works together. Many brands will train you on what to do for that particular brand, but that's very confusing if you are one of those people that really likes to see how things are laid out without brands involved. And I think that's something that I love so much. And I think it's a wonderful thing if you learn things from the back end first, and then you can really associate certain modalities or peels, you know, with a brand eventually, but you really need to understand this concept first. So we'll begin with this. Um, number one, it is right now 7.30 in the morning. I like to get up and get my day going. I get up at 4.30 every single day, whether I necessarily need to or not. Uh, Monday through Friday, it's usually a need to because I start teaching pretty early or have other people that I'm leading in some sort of way. Um, but on the weekends, I'll still wake up early. I like to get things done so that I can enjoy my family in the afternoons. You know, I feel like that is a key to success for most everybody, even if you don't want to, right? Well, um, client care plans, this is something that I just love. And I love it so much that I do want to talk about it early in the morning with you. So I have my little copy. This, of course, is going to be uploaded to our YouTube channel for Courtney Sykes Molecular Anti-Aging. And just a really great way to kind of nail out the year and just really dive into what works for clients. You know, when you're an aesthetics practitioner, your job is to help people get to where they need to be in skincare and help them spend dollars with you, but reap some sort of benefit from doing that. It can't just be a free for all. You can't just throw things in the mix because it seems popular in the moment or, you know, you just don't know what to do. You kind of have to have this plan, right? So as you see here, this is one of my um, slides from a lecture I give often. So we'll actually read the points to the left and then I'm gonna speak through this care plan on the side. And this is gonna kind of preface how I walk you through some of the pro peels, because you'll see, you know, once we talk about the branded peels itself, it'll kind of co-align with a little bit of some of these brand neutral options here in this care plan. So here we go. It says categories are simple and strategic, 100%. So as you see, the client care plan example is a fictitious client. I've named her Susan Smith. She's on three week intervals with serving her customers and she wants to have them come every three weeks for some serious results. So, you know, sometimes four to six weeks is okay. But if you really want to get somewhere with someone a little bit quicker every three weeks. So we have got our assessment of Susan. We've got our actual treatment room care plan listed there in six sessions. Now, of course, I usually recommend a six to eight treatment care plan. And that's what it says here on this next point. But I also want you to understand that this is kind of where people need to be to see the result, you know, that wow factor. But then they need to do this on a regular basis still. So there's kind of, you know, these really intense plans that we do in six to eight sessions, but then there's a moment where you have to say, okay, I want to also make sure the client understands that there's maintenance involved. You know, skin care is a lifelong journey. And so that is an important factor to remember as well. So it's not just going to stop at the six to eight, right? And then you have an evening home care routine. We'll talk through that in specifics to ingredient based knowledge first. You know, and then we can incorporate the modalities, we can incorporate the um, actual branded items. And this is us for us, you know, this talk today is for us to talk about back bar items. But truly, when you're thinking of home care, which is retail products for your consumers, that's a different ball game for sure, but also fun to learn and get to a place where you teach it to your clients very successfully. 
then you see the morning home care routine below. It should be simple and to the point. And then up to the upper right hand side, you're going to see some other advanced recommendations such as supplements. Uh, I have really enjoyed lining up my supplements. I just recently got a Sunday through Saturday little pill, you know, uh, container and just being able to on Sundays fill all that up. And then every morning when I walk downstairs, I'm ready to walk out the door. That's the first thing that I do before I go get in the car is I will scoop up my little, you know, four or five supplements, go ahead and take those. Um, what I will do with that is drink some water with a little bit of lemon juice in it because I hate straight water in the morning. I have absolutely no clue why. <laughs> so I have to put a little lemon in it and then I take my supplements and then there you go. But that's a good recommendation for your clients too. Then you have other advanced recommendations um, and I listed a few here. That's where we're gonna get into discussing them. And I'm gonna show you a couple of things uh, in my book as well. I'll have to pull that up for you too. Some advanced protocols. And then hormone replacement therapy is really important. That's a whole other lecture. And I have, um, I believe a lecture on that uploaded to our YouTube channel for Southeastern Aesthetics Institute. So that is important. You know, hormone education for aesthetics practitioners is primarily, um, and most importantly, one of the most fundamental things you need to do um, as an esthetician is to understand the endocrine system. We're not endocrinologists, but we have to understand how that correlates with skincare because it very much does. Okay. All right. So then it says contain the plan uh, to six to eight treatments and then place clients in a maintenance stage. We said that. Include added value recommendations, such as those things we just listed, advanced recommendations, supplements, you know, things we're not necessarily going to profit or benefit from, but that's okay. It's actually not about making money. It's about truly helping this person. And I think that's why most aesthetics practitioners got into this job. You know, that's why we're here. Then be ingredient specific or never sometimes brand specific. I think it's important uh, to outline things, and we've said this already, it's important to outline things to clients ingredient specific first. Your knowledge is important to outline in the very beginning of what's going on, right? So that is key, that is critical, it is important. So we're gonna start with these care plans this way and then you can start incorporating branded items and you're gonna gain respect from those clients super fast, okay. So here we have Susan, and we said she has got adult acne, which is hormonal, you know, typically, right? She's got some anti-aging fine lines and wrinkles. You know, that's always, as we get older, that's our thing. And we didn't say what Fitzpatrick she is, you know, so you, that really plays a huge role in how aggressive you're going to go with a treatment pretty quickly. Am I right? Yes. So if they're more on the fits one to two, you can be a little bit more aggressive, super fast. If it's more of a fits four, five, six, you want to be a little bit careful in regards to pairing uh, peels together with microdermabrasion, for example. Or I'm going to chat with you in a little bit about microneedling. That would be something that I would not necessarily even pair with a superficial peel in the beginning for somebody with a higher Fitzpatrick. It's just they're going to hyper or hypopigment a little bit easier, but we can still treat all Fitzpatricks, right? Hello, come on, we're estheticians, we got this. You just want to be a little bit more careful and not so aggressive to start. But then the third, fourth, fifth, you can start to incorporate some of those things together and see how they do. You know, it's just one of those things. Okay, so if you look at my recommendations, I kind of paired it into a title of a service that makes sense to most people. So when I say double exfoliation, I'm incorporating two types of exfoliation. If I'm doing microdermabrasion, of course, it's gonna be a microdermabrasion facial, no peels, no nothing, it's just what it is. And then from there, so those are kind of what I utilized here and you will see how successful this will be for this person. If you can just imagine as we walk through this, okay. So we're gonna do a double exfoliation facial for Susan. And we're going to pair a lactic acid peel. You know, lactic acid peel between 20 and 40 percent is a really great choice. The big thing you want to be careful of in the beginning is pH level. So I'll give you some examples from my line in a minute, but I really want you to let that information simmer first. Lactic acid chemical peels in the beginning only need to really be in a pH of between a two and a three to be effective enough, which, which is extremely effective, okay? But if you're going to go in the medical route and do a pH of one, 
or something along those lines between a one and a two, that's going to be more aggressive. That might not be the best place to start someone, right? So pH level has a lot to do with this and it's kind of unwritten here. It's unspoken, but we know, you know, we know. So you need to make sure your lineup of chemical peels from whatever brand you kind of almost want to put a little label on the front of it that lists the pH levels to make things easier as you're kind of picking and choosing in your treatment room as you go. So that's something to think about. Then in three weeks from there, we wanted to do a microdermabrasion facial with red LED light therapy. So microdermabrasion, we love this. And you know, you're gonna turn up the vacuum suction. And of course we, of course, love the diamond tip microdermabrasion. So you're gonna turn up the suction a little bit if they can take it. But for folks that have the redness, the telangiectasias, you know, the broken capillaries, we're gonna turn that vacuum suction down just a little bit. Then red LED light therapy is truly my favorite, favorite thing because there's no issues that can come from it, right? There's non-heat bearing. It's light therapy, however, and photo light therapy helps with a lot of different things. Specifically, the red LED helps with healing. It helps with anti-aging fine lines and wrinkles by promoting collagen. So we love it for that purpose. So we want red LED. You could incorporate that in every single service and you see that we actually did as we move forward here. Then we start getting into the glycolic. So treatment three and treatment four, this one has a little typo on it. If you look at treatment three, I've got a glycolic 30% and then treatment four should really go into a glycolic 60%. Okay, so keep that in mind. You never wanna do the same thing twice. So you always wanna go up in percentage and that is extremely important for long-term success, 100%. Okay, so glycolics. We're gonna go through a couple of glycolics that pair well for your client. There are many, again, pH levels are important here. So I'll scoot over to that very shortly just so we can make sure we're on track and you're not forgetting. But glycolics produce new cells. We never wanna start anybody on a glycolic peel in their first session with you. You wanna start with your lactics, your enzyme peels, um, golly, what else? You know, even a kojic acid-based peel for brightening, anything that's more superficial in nature and anything that's usually less than 10% you know, might be a great place to start for most folks, but you know, Susan here, she's got kind of an aggressive treatment plan that we're doing, that's totally fine as well. Again, pH levels play a big role in it. But as we get into third and fourth, and I'm speaking to most of you as though you can do everything, okay? At each state requires different requirements in terms of modalities of use for estheticians and your scope of practice. So if you are more in the advanced realm, you can use pH of one chemical peels. There's some great benefits to that. And again, you need to build people up to those. And then of course, things such as micro needling at a one millimeter depth or below is going to usually be a dermal thing, which requires physician oversight. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. I can definitely help you with scope of practice, who needs to oversee what for most days, you know. And then cosmetic lasers, love that. I love the resurfacing benefits of it. There's a wonderful, wonderful um, just piece of the pie that you can really help those clients with those things when you can do uh, we use the Cyton Jewel, and there's plenty of brands out there that I absolutely love, but you need to be able to do a little bit of ablation sometimes. So not only IPL or BBL for spot treats of reds and browns, but you need to be able to ablate the skin and really utilize those micron depths to get all that surface dead skin off in order for your peels, in order for your red LED light therapy, in order for some other things to penetrate a little bit further. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, so the third and the fourth, we decided we're going to be a glycolic 30 and then move up into a glycolic 60. Incorporate that with red LED for healing, which is great paired with chemical peels, right? Then our fifth session. You might wanna put a star by that one if you're taking notes, but the fifth session is always gonna be something where you want to do the deepest thing you're gonna do. Or if you're doing eight sessions, you want your seventh session to be the deepest thing you're gonna do, right? Gotta have my coffee in the morning, that's so important. <laughs> so the fifth session, microdermabrasion 
is fantastic. And we built up Susan, no matter what her bits, Patrick, this is a good place to actually take modalities and blend them. So microdermabrasion to sand everything down. And then a Jesner solution I love. Now, Jesner peels, again, are harsh on their own. They typically are gonna have that resource and all that alcohol-like ingredient to strip the lipid barrier so we can get down into those pores and produce results. And that's a wonderful thing. However, please also look at your pH level of that. Can they take it? So here, I suggested a three layer Jesner solution. That is fine. However, I just, I don't know if I would do that with a pH of one Jesner solution. So again, look at your pH levels. But for three layers, if the Jesner peel is a pH of two, that makes a little bit more sense. So you're going to apply one layer, let it dry for one minute. Apply the second layer, let it dry for one minute. Apply the third layer, let that dry. And then you know that the salicylic acid within it self-neutralizes the entire thing. So no need to neutralize unless they're feeling very tingling, but it should get to a place where it just stops that tingle. And if you're going to pair that with microdermabrasion, you're going to want to do it very, very lightly. Um, I would not do a dermaplaning with a Jesner ever. Typically, we can be a little heavier handed with um, surgical scalpels, right? When we're getting all that dead skin off with dragging a dermaplaning scalpel through the skin. So that's going to take off a little bit more. And we want to just keep that in mind. Do not pair dermaplaning with anything else other than just something like an enzyme or a superficial item. So keep that up. All right. Then as you see, I'll run through this quickly and then we'll scoot over to some of the actual professional peels and discuss. Our evening home care routine, I just think that's so important to really go to in great detail with clients because they need to understand the evening should really be where you do the most, where you do the most. So here we go. Cleanser, vitamin C-based cleanser alternated with a salicylic acid-based cleanser. That is a great thing. Now, if you can get your clients to do that, good for you. You might have to somewhat build folks up to doing kind of an alternating thing like that. So keep that in mind. But here's the benefit. We always want to do a nourisher one night and acid the next. And I will show you, let me see if I've got this in the slideshow as well, my generic list of acids versus nourishers. I think that's really important. And if you didn't go to my school, you probably want to make some notes on that. Have a column of acids and have a column of nourishers. You need to understand what breaks the skin cells down in terms of breaking up that lipid barrier. And then you need to know what builds them up. You know, so that's important. So vitamin C is a nourisher. It's also known as ascorbic acid. And we know vitamin C to be hydrating in nature, but it's got brightening effects. It helps to boost collagen. It's usually very, very easy going on the skin. People love vitamin C, but you can't constantly just sit there and nourish your skin all the time. You got to throw in a little bit of acidic cleanser at times, especially if you're trying to create mitosis and clean out those pores. And for Susan, She's got adult acne that's hormonal. So we need to throw in a little bit of salicylic based cleanser, which salicylic, remember, eats away dirt and debris in the pore. We're going to throw that in there at least two to three times a week and even just two. Otherwise, do your vitamin C based cleanser. Do something a little bit more hydrating and nourishing, but make sure you discuss the benefits of alternating even cleansers. You see that I'm going to get into serum one and serum two. Um, that is important. You know, we always want to alternate and do different things each night. But again, cleansers are important as well. Then your exfoliants, your exfoliants are important. Remember, clients have got to have something at home with a greediness to it to get off that dead skin at home. I mean, what if you've done a chemical peel and they don't want to just necessarily be shedding for days and days and days? They need to be able to put their makeup on. They need to be able to recover from that and go about their lives. So a gentle yet abrasive, if that even exists, <laughs> a gentle yet abrasive, um, hydrating in nature kind of base to it, but some granules that really get off and scour away that dead skin, that resurfacing scrub, at least throw in there a couple times a week. I'm a big believer in that granular or physical exfoliation. I love to do it on a very consistent basis for me personally. Um, I actually enjoy doing mine in the morning before I put my makeup on. So it just depends on what they want to do and how you want to serve this client. Again, this is an example. Then your serum one, serum two. And you can even put something like serum combo one, serum combo two, but I just think that 
it's important to educate clients on the benefits of what a serum actually is. And the serums are workhorses of the entire thing. That is very, very important. So when I mean work um, horses, I mean something that creates an active situation in which their skin is going to respond in a positive way. You cannot just cleanse, tone, and moisturize. There's no active, there's no action happening, and there's no results. It's just more or less cleaning your skin and then trying to hydrate it. But again, what have you done? Have you created mitosis? Have you hydrated deep down into the skin? Have you created kind of a lipid barrier protection? All that's missing when you're not incorporating serum. So serum education is something you can even begin with and then go into the cleanser importance later. Serums are probably the most important thing. All right, serum one. We said for Susan, a glycolic acid-based serum, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and then a salicylic acid-based serum, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Now, I would not normally say that someone would need to do two different acids every single night, but if we're doing kind of an intensified treatment plan for Susan, then we might want to do that for a couple of weeks, you know, even six to eight weeks, and then scoot her off of one of those. I would hope that, and of course assume, due to what we're doing and understanding how results work, that you could really take away that salicylic acid-based serum and maybe alternate that um, or throw in a stem cell based serum or something else or a squalene hyaluronic acid based serum. Because really, and you should write this down, you always want to actually do an acid one night, a nourisher the next night for most people. So, you know, as estheticians, we keep our skin up. We understand the importance of that. So for you, I would say an acid one night, a nourisher the next night. So what I mean is something that breaks the skin cells down, and creates mitosis change. And then the next night, the nourisher to build cells up and protect the lipid barrier, which again, histology to me is so important in understanding skin health from a cellular perspective. So definitely check out my uh, lecture on the Southeastern Aesthetics Institute YouTube page, because that is a whole different ball game. I could sit there and talk for hours about cells and the lipid barrier structure of a cell which consists of a cellular membrane made up of two layers of lipid with water in between. The moment that we disrupt that lipid barrier, you're, you're gonna start feeling like you have dry and irritated skin. You're gonna feel like your skin is not hydrated and moist. You're gonna feel like you see more lines and wrinkles. And in fact, your skin's gonna be more open to a lot of things in the environment, such as UV damage, environmental toxins, free radicals, and things like that. So that is very important to remember. Okay, back to these serums. We're gonna be aggressive with Susan, we said that. So that's why we're gonna do the glycolic acid-based serum one night, and glycolic acid produces new cells by creating mitosis at the keratinocyte level, which is the stratum germinativum, the basal layer, right? That's very important. Then serum two is designed to work with her adult hormonal acne. So salicylic acid, again, eats away at dirt and debris in the pore. Again, a couple weeks of use, we could probably pull her off of the two acids uh, per week like that on you know um, alternating days. But we want to incorporate because, you know, as we get older, we're going to assume that we need a little bit of hydration and a little bit of boost there. So it's not just a hyaluronic acid based hydrator is going to just work for us. We need to make sure we do a stem cell based hydrator. So stem cells help to produce new cells by building them up. So it's a little bit different than glycolic acid. Glycolic acid produces new cells by breaking them down and creating mitosis of keratinocytes, whereas stem cells, plant-based usually, are going to just protect those cells and build them up in a very scientific way. Super amazing for anti-aging fine lines and wrinkles. Then this kind of advanced additional item that I discussed here, if you see, is benzoyl peroxide. I'm not a big benzoyl peroxide fan, and I'll tell you why, but I'll tell you why I incorporated it here. Benzoyl peroxide is generically used across the board in skincare, and I know y'all know what this is. However, it's an oxide molecule, an oxidation molecule specifically, and oxidation is actually free radical inducing. It's not O2 as in the oxygen you breathe. It's oxidation like how metal turns into rust, so it is very important to remember that benzoyl peroxide, it works for acne, and I'll tell you how it works for acne, but it's also a toxic chemical, so you don't want to use it on a consistent basis. I actually like some other things 
for oxygen oxygen infusion into the skin that are non-benzoyl peroxide. But in the spirit of education, I want to just make sure you understand it works well, but it actually stops working um, very quickly if you use it too much. So here's how you're going to use them. It says here, benzoyl peroxide based serum every other night for the first three weeks only. And then, and that's important, add a peptide infused serum twice per week. So that would kind of be maybe an alternative to the salicylic is the peptide. I love a peptide, it tightens the skin. But then backing up to the benzoyl peroxide, remember it's oxygen and sending oxygen into the pores kills bacteria. I'll say that one more time. Oxygen introduced into the pores kills bacteria. That is so important, okay? So we love that, but look at what I said to do. Use every other night for the first three weeks only. That really is the tipping point and the stopping point for benzoyl peroxide, I'll tell you right now. So make sure you keep that in mind for your clients. Benzoyl peroxide stops working after three weeks, okay? All right, then... Let's see, morning routine. We talked about just a simple morning routine. If you're doing all that at night for something as serious as what Susan's got going on and she said she wants to treat it, we're gonna keep it simple in the morning. So we said we're gonna do a stem cell based cleanser. Again, stem cells help produce new cells by building them up. Then vitamin C always should be used in the morning as a serum. Uh, vitamin C, remember, it's one of those things that is very unstable, but it's also a good antioxidant. So it kills free radicals. And in the spirit of that, it unfortunately kills off the benefits and effects of things that are results producing for our skin, such as glycolic acid, salicylic acid, retinols and what have you, it does not pair well. So what it means actually is that it cancels each other out. So vitamin C, you wanna use that independently in a serum leave-on format like that. And so in the morning time is actually the best time. It's got some brightening effects. It's not an acid per se in terms of breaking skin cells down. It actually nourishes and builds cells up. And then it also, again, promotes collagen and again, promotes brightening, but it also is a sunscreen booster. So by that particular definition, you should always know that it should be used in the morning. Then, sunscreen is a different ball game. Um, I could talk about that for a long time too, but I will always say for spreadability factor, you want something with dimethicone in it. Dimethicone is a silicone-like ingredient that just spreads easily, so that usually helps with that whitish cast that some of our sunscreens get. I will also say, and it's not listed here, you want a physical sun protection, not a chemical. I'll say that again, you want a physical sunscreen protection, not a chemical, and that is gonna help with making sure that you incorporate the good ingredients. So good ingredients in sunscreens are gonna be titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, okay? Titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Then on the flip side, what's not so great and what's actually toxic to your skin, your system, I, and you know, here I am talking about this, I think it's important to notice as theticians, we love these ingredients, you know, but we have to be proactive with what's good for our skin, what's active in terms of what's going to work, and that doesn't necessarily mean it all is going to be organic in nature, because that's not the case at all. In fact, most organic products are very nourishing, but where are the acids? You know, you have to have some of those, and glycolic acid is actually derived from sugar cane, and, you know, mandelic acid is actually derived from almonds, and so you actually have some natural based acids in there that frankly a lot of organic skincare lines sometimes don't use so just kind of keep that in mind but nonetheless you don't want to just infuse your client's skin with toxins and sunscreens that are chemical in nature usually have the three o words that i say are no-nos so the no-no ingredients in sunscreens are going to be octanoxate to say like oxybenzone, I'll say that one more time. The no-no ingredients in skincare um, for sunscreens is going to be octanoxate, octosalate, oxybenzone. Those are really, really terrible for the skin, and a lot of labs still make products with those in it. It's actually coming out that those are becoming toxic, especially for use on children. So keep that in mind. You never want to go to the store and just go to the over-counter places and purchase chemical-based sunscreens. It is really actually horrible. You're just, you know, actually better off not wearing sunscreen at all um, in that case. So make sure your sunscreens, because that is important. We want to protect our skin from UV damage. It is mineral-based and it's made of titanium dioxide and zinc oxide with a dimethicone base. Okay. So I want to actually scoot over here to the website. So for our professionals, we have a whole tab 
we have a whole tab. So we're going to click on professional products. And I'll tell you really quick how a lot of these pair well in terms of the chemical peels itself. Okay. So we've got our professional serums, which we love, but down here we have our peels and I want to go through each of them, but I want to kind of highlight some of the things that go with what we were just talking about. So remember we said, and here's some good examples. Remember we said that if you're going to start a client with a lactic peel, it needs to be a superficial lactic, and then you can get into the deeper, more low pH lactics. I'll tell you, this pro-plumping molecules, that's actually a lactic acid chemical peel, but very low in dose. Okay, so see here, this one is in a pH of around two, two-ish, so that's usually good, and that's going to be around a seven and a half percent lactic acid infusion. So seven and a half percent. You can massage it in. You can actually paint it on, leave it, remove it. Um, it is so low in dose that it, you know, of course works very effectively, but you could even use it as a leave-on product also. Now, most people would probably be irritated by that if you're a peel, you know, guru and you get stuff all the time and your clients just get things all the time. This would be a great one to actually leave on or do a thin layer at the end of a facial as well. So the molecules are very, very user-friendly in that way. And I don't want it to confuse you, but the molecules, I don't list it as a peel because you can use it as a peel, but you can also use it as an acidic serum, just a really strong one. <laughs> so if you look at the actual ingredients, there is, it's just one of those things where you have got purified water, lactic, and then a little bit of a thickener. Xanthan gum is usually a thickener, that's it. So there's nothing in there that makes it anything more than what it is. So you're gonna see the plumping molecules is listed as an acidic serum, but you can totally use that as a chemical peel. So one thin layer. Then I would move Susan up to this do peel 40%. And I want you to look at the pH level of that at 1.4. So that is more medical in nature, but let me tell you something, we love this one. People still just love this one. It's probably the strongest lactic that you'll ever use, but it's got 40% lactic acid in a gel base. So indications are for dry, mature, mild acne, uneven skin tone, hyperkeratosis, and large pores, elastosis, fine lines, superficial wrinkles, all that. So you're going to do one thin layer on the client and leave it there. So how would you incorporate this with modalities? That's your question. We love things like radio frequency skin tightening, okay? So you could even do a very thin microdermabrasion. Let's say we built her up to this, of course, a thin microdermabrasion. And then let's say we wanted to take the radio fre frequency skin tightening and really get in here in the jowl area and the nasal labial folds and work that into a session and then do a thin, thin layer of the dew peel 40%, leave that on for three to five minutes and then remove, neutralize if needed. And then you can apply a mask, of course, massage, serum, and sunscreen. So that would be a phenomenal, a phenomenal treatment. So you could even call that a micro tight facial plus a peel or something along those lines. I love really cool names for, you know, um, services. So remember that radio frequency skin tightening produces alternating energy waveforms that produce nonspecific localized heat in the dermis and epidermis. You'll see it's getting light outside. So 730 moving into eight o'clock now. So keep in mind that the dew peel does pair well with other things. I wouldn't necessarily say this one pairs well with invasive things. So microdermabrasion and radio frequency skin tightening are not invasive. They're going to actually send, of course, microdermabrasion removes dead skin from the top, but the radio frequency skins or sends energy into the skin that's alternating. So it's not like microneedling that punctures the skin. So just remember anything in a pH of one, between a one and a two, you're probably not going to want to throw that on the skin after you've ablated them with a laser or microneedled them because gosh, that would not feel very good, would it? Okay. Then going back to these other molecules here, which here's how cool it is and how you can really just kind of bump up your benefits with those ablative items. Okay. So ablative items. Ablative items would be things like microneedling and laser resurfacing. So I'll say that one more time. Ablative treatments would be microneedling and laser resurfacing. How do you pair these up? So you're going to do 
the pro-brightening molecules would be a good choice. Let's say that she's got hyperpigmentation or, or uh, your male client has hyperpigmentation, right? The brightening molecules has a couple different things in there, specifically 7.5% kojic acid, which is a brightener. It's an alpha hydroxy acid. But look at what else it's got in there. It's got glycolic acid, pyruvic acid, and lactic acid. So I actually love this. So we do a couple things here. We do micro-channeling which sends little needles into the skin at 0.25 millimeters and 0.5 millimeters, which is in every one scope of practice as an esthetician. It is less than one millimeter thick. So it's in the epidermis, which is again, within your scope. So when we're micro channeling, we do a thin layer of the brightening molecules or even those plumping molecules if you need a little bit more hydration because people love lactic acid, you know. But when people have hyperpigmentation, you need to apply a thin layer of this. And that is totally safe because you've got that low dose yet very effective push of kojic acid going into the pores for brightening. So listen, that would be a great thing. I think a lot of folks think, oh my goodness, I can only do needles and that's it and not incorporate acids, but you can. So that is what you do. It's going to need to be that less than 10% infusion. Okay. Then um, we also do, like I said, not only micro channeling, but micro needling. Micro needling is either going to be a 1.0 depth, 1.5 depth, or even down to a 2.5 depth, which would be a little bit deeper. And of course, as deep as you would normally go with something like that, and you need to have your client numbed. But a good choice, let's say, if they have got some acne scars, maybe some superficial acne left over, and you've treated them with microneedling at a deeper level, you can add a thin layer of the purifying molecules. The purifying molecules has that salicylic acid in there. And I want you to look at the ingredients. It literally is only purifying water. Then you've got alcohol, which is a lipid stripper. So that's important to send the salicylic acid in there. And then you just have salicylic. It's got three ingredients. One that's water, one that's a stripper, gonna help to decrease the skin, and one that's actually the active. So again, very free of any chemicals. It just is what it is. It's a wonderful product to have in your back bar and can be incorporated in many ways. Um, let's say that you also want to bump up and push the effectiveness of your masks, okay? And I'll back up one minute. We've got some awesome masks, um, and if I'm going to incorporate something, let's say I'm going to do the water infusion mask for the um, client at the end of the service, and of course, you know, professionals get a discounted price, by, um, much less than that price, but Lyra is a mask that infuses water. It's got a lot of glycerin, aloe, shag bark, hickory extract, algae, some wonderful things. So we love this mask, but you could actually bump it up a little bit, put a couple drops of the purifying molecules in there to really give it a salicylic boost. So kind of look at the molecules as a booster a little bit, and that's going to help you customize them and use them as a peel, as a booster, or as a serum. So again, all of the molecules can be used as a peel, a booster, or a serum. So very, very multi-use. Okay. Then let's say that I'm doing some laser resurfacing. Okay. So laser resurfacing. I would say this would be a combo I would do for the thicker skin that's been laying out in the sun. I wouldn't just do this for someone that just has thin skin that's never done a laser treatment before. If you do laser resurfacing, you know, if you're familiar with that, it goes from six microns up to 100 microns. 100 microns is way out of our scope and typically people need to be put under anesthesia or some sort of local anesthetic in order to have that done. So I'm a huge believer and a little goes a long way with laser resurfacing, but it's super important. And everybody can do it. So I always say, um, do a four to six micron depth for most folks going up to 10 microns at the deepest. Then let's say you're doing a six. I love a six or a six to eight microns. It's really a nice resurfacing. It's kind of like a just really advanced, advanced microdermabrasion. I mean, they're definitely gonna be a little bit red afterwards and they're gonna see some of the you know, edema swelling that night or the next day. They'll take a Benadryl, they'll be okay. But it looks amazing. So you're gonna end up seeing a lot of that resurfacing of the texture. The lines and wrinkles are going away and it's incredible. But here's how you can bump that up. 
let's say you do a four to six micron or a six to eight micron depth. I would say probably that is going to be your max. Then if you do a 10, I wouldn't necessarily incorporate a light peel like this, but you could do if it's four to six or six to eight microns and you've done, you know, one good over view, not several passes, just one good pass, you can then take a thin layer of resurgence molecules as a glycolic acid booster. So you see that this glycolic acid is at seven and a half percent. It is low for a peel, but very high for a serum, right? So you can do that as a booster and that's going to help get that glycolic acid in there to produce mitosis. And again, if mitosis is interesting to you, go check out um, some more of my lectures on the Southeastern Aesthetics Institute YouTube channel. And not all my videos are on there. Of course, I would love for you to take my CEU classes and other things too, if you're a licensed professional, because we do a lot of virtual courses, especially this year. So that is very important to just remember all these cool little things you can do. All these cool little things you can do. All right, then microdermabrasion, guys. Microdermabrasion. We love microderm. I have to say for our acneic clients, this would be a really good choice. The purity peel 30% um, with a microderm. You could additionally pair the 30% purity with the radio frequency skin tightening. And then I wanted to show you, I think the 15% is around here somewhere. There it is. There's a 15%, then of course there's a um, 30%. So this is a pH of 2.6, the 15%, so totally within most people's scope. And then the purity peel 30% is a pH of 2.5. So love that, love that. And that's gonna deep cleanse those pores and really tighten them. So purity peels are not just great for acneic clients, folks. It's really good too for people with rosacea um, telangiectasias, all of that, because it helps remove the red. I always say salicylic acid helps remove the red in aesthetics. So a thin layer. So we might do, you know, a purity 15% on a rosacea telangiectasia red sensitive skin type client. But for our acneic client, we would want to bump them into the 30%. And that would be great to do with our non-invasive modalities, you know, such as your microdermabrasion, radio frequency skin tightening, and the like. Okay. I wanted to see if I could pull this up. And this is actually a little back end of, <laughs> of what I teach with. But anyway, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Edmodo. It's just easy for me to pull it up this way. There we go. Let me log in. This is my teacher login. Okay. So in my classes, I have a bunch of folders for my students, but I just did want to pull up this book and I'll show you where y'all can actually get the book if you're not a student or an alumni here. I will show you. So this is the second edition of my book and real quick, I will share to pull it away from the video a little bit. If you go to seaestheticsinstitute.com and then click on or actually hover over continuing education, click on downloadable guides, scroll down, the book is here. So you can actually purchase it um, for, I think it's $29. You would download it here and then it should say that. But nonetheless, that is a phenomenal book and resource and I will show you. I'm gonna scroll all the way down. You can see I've got tons of pages. These are all my articles I've written over the years for Dermoscope Magazine, just some really good things. I've got consent forms in here. I've got a little bit of everything. <laughs> But then closer to the bottom, we've got protocols, and that's what I wanted to show you. So we have got spa protocols by skin condition. That is important. But then, because I love some ablative things, right? I've got advanced protocols. That's really what I added into the second edition. So this is really key. And I'll show you really quick. There's obviously a bunch. There's obviously a bunch, but I'll show you real quick for Susan. We talked about anti-aging fine lines and wrinkles being a thing. So, you know, this is a different way to do it too with more advanced modalities incorporated in. So, double exfoliation facial with mechanical scrub and a lactic peel. Again, I would choose maybe the plumping molecules as your lactic peel, then move into the dew peel 40%, which I love. Dermaplaning facial with red LED th light therapy. Dermaplaning is phenomenal. You could still boost that with 
and I don't know if I can get to it now. Where is it? Let's see. You can boost your dermaplaning with any of those molecules, guys. So you could do the brightening molecules with the kojic acid. You could do a dermaplaning and then add in your plumping molecules with the lactic acid, okay? You could do your dermaplaning and add the pro-purifying molecules with the 7.5% salicylic acid. So again, all sorts of ways to boost the effectiveness of those items. Then we said a double exfoliation facial with mechanical scrub and glycolic 30%. Let me show you a couple of our glycolics really quick. If you actually look at the Revelation peels, there's three. These are no joke. So these are the glycolics for big girl estheticians and big boy estheticians because these are low in pH. So we'll start with the Revelation peel 15%. Of course, it is 15% glycolic acid in water. That is it. <laughs> so very important to notate what this is all about because, and you can read on all these um, protocols, of course, on the website as well, but it's a pH of 1.5, very, very low. Then I've got a Revelation Peel 35%, pH of 1.4. So we would want to build them up to this sort of thing, okay? Then Revelation Peel 50%, that is a 50% glycolic acid in water, very, very aggressive. So again, you want to utilize glycolics, but be careful with these. These are phenomenal, great results, but one little you know, layer will do you, leave it on, but you most certainly need to neutralize this. We have neutralizer. Um, it is not on the website yet, but make sure that you request that. Or of course, I always recommend taking some baking soda and water, mixing it into a paste and compressing it into the skin. Once you remove the peel with water first, then compress your neutralizing solution into the skin to really neutralize and make sure that they're good to go there. Okay, so you could really take that number three is my point and just customize it however you need to. You could actually turn this into an eight to 10 treatment care plan with the series of the glycolic. So there's a bunch of ways you could actually customize this. Okay, then our micro needling session one and session two. I always recommend doing at least four sessions of microneedling, but this is again an intro into what you can do with these advanced modalities. And with that, if you're micro channeling with the superficial depths, great. If you're micro needling with the deeper depths, also great. Just make sure that you're constantly going a little bit deeper each time. You should never do the same thing twice. Then again, you can add in a booster. So if we're doing anti-aging fine lines and wrinkles, I would truly say the resurgence molecules, a thin layer of that, in with your micro needling sessions. So afterwards, and it's gonna tingle. I mean, let me just tell you that. So you wanna have a fan handy for your client, but you can apply a thin layer of the resurgence molecules, which again is a 7.5% glycolic. So remember, this is a booster, it's a peel or it's a serum. So remember that about the molecules and you can pair all molecules with your, you know, invasive items too. Non-invasive items, you can be a little bit more aggressive with your chemical peels and do the ones that are true, true deep chemical peels, you know, that are over 15% in concentration, 15, 30, 50%, all is there for you. Okay, then I'll wrap this up with a couple notes, but this last one, this goes into kind of building up your glycolic. So that's actually a great way to do it. Um, instead of doing a series of glycolics back to back, what I recommended here is to do the microneedling sessions in between and then finish out with maybe one of those um, other peels, the revelation peels that we discussed. The last one that I really wanna show you is just um, ooh, a Jesner. So I'm gonna talk about two and then we'll wrap it up. The Jesner Detox. This one I love. This one I love, but look at the pH. Remember that is so, so important. The pH of these peels. This one's low. So here's how I would do this one. I would do, if you're going to pair it with anything, you can do a light microdermabrasion, like a light one, because I love to be heavy handed, but here you're going to be light. And then you're going to do one layer of this Jesner Detox. Again, if it's a chemical peel where the Jesner is above a two, you can layer it three, four, or five layers. It doesn't quite matter because it's going to um, neutralize itself due to the salicylic. So remember that this one is strong now. I don't want y'all to go layering and go crazy with it. That is important. The thing that bumps this up and makes it a little bit more low in pH is it is 
the normal composition, right? The 14% lactate, 14% salicylic, and the 14% resorcinol, but it's in an alcohol base. So the alcohol paired with the resorcinol double strips the skin. Okay, it double strips the skin. So it's gonna go down a little bit further, but again, the results are gonna be absolutely amazing. So that's what you get with that one. And then I love, like I said, the, um, the radio frequency skin tightening. I really, really do. And I would pair that if you have someone that has anti-aging fine lines and wrinkles concerns, and they have some hyperpigmentation, you could do a whole RF skin tightening session let the skin cool down and then do one layer of the brightening peel, 50%. And again, look at the pH. It's a pH of 0.9. That is extremely low, probably the lowest pH chemical peel that exists in humanity. I don't know. I'm sure there's something else, but this one's really aggressive. Love it though. If you want to see the hyperpigmentation lift off the skin, if someone's been in the sun all summer and they have tons of hormonal hyperpigmentation and UV ray hyperpigmentation, this is the one that will get it. Just make sure that you don't pair this one with invasive. You can pair it with non-invasive. So RF skin tightening, microdermabrasion, those sorts of things you can pair with that. So I, I really hope that y'all enjoyed this little discussion about how to pair modalities with chemical peels. Because I think a lot of estheticians are scared to do that, but you most certainly do not have to be. So write these things down, shoot me an email at info at seaestheticsinstitute.com. Reach out to me on any platform and I'm happy to answer your questions. I think this is the fun part about what we do as estheticians and I cannot wait to see you soon.